what is going on everybody happy friday to you all and welcome to another live beer review today whenever i review this something from this brewery i just get very giddy and excited just because i would say they're probably one of my favorite breweries of all time and whenever i get to try something new from them i just get overjoyed with excitement and so today we're gonna be looking at a russian imperial stout from adroit brewing company out of uh, i think they're out of percival but they have a location in Ventil. Uh, Virginia, but today we're going to be looking at some Dia de los Muertes. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but in English it's pronounced the Day of the Dead. Which, just look at that can art right there. Holy mother of Jeebus. Isn't that just amazing? And I know it's, a, it's pretty hot for a stout, but there's never a time not to have a stout. Uh, so this guy comes in at a whopping 13.7% ABV. So this guy's this guy's a big boy, which I'm excited to try out. So, and the cool thing, there's a little bit of a story right here on the side of the can that I want to read really quick before we even open this thing. So what it says is, there's a place where the restless souls wander, burdened by the weight of their own sadness, they cannot enter heaven. So they wait, trapped between our world and the next, searching for a way to rid themselves of their pain in the hope that somehow, someday, they'll be reunited with the ones they love. Awesome little thing they put right there. I'm a really big fan of that. Kind of because I feel like with each beer they come out with, they're telling a story. And just by the intricate can art, the very, like, in-depth uh, flavors you get from the beer, it's just, this brewery to me can do no wrong, in my opinion. I've never had anything from this brewery that I don't love, and... I'm really excited to see if that kind of stays with it. So, without further ado, let's crack this guy open. With it being more of like an, a Russian Imperial Stout, I'm expecting there to be a lot more oomph in flavor with this one. More deeper, kind of darker, a little bit of a bitter kind of note to it. Kind of, because it's not like a pastry stout or anything like that. I'm, I'm expecting maybe flavors of like coffee, dark chocolate. I want nice, like kind of bitter, roasty flavors in this, but it's definitely going to have a nice boozy note to it to where I feel like this might have a little bit of a sweetness. Who knows? Maybe with it kind of being like maybe a mocha kind of situation that there might be like a slight kind of coffee sweetness in there, but we'll have to find out about it. So let's crack this guy open and see what this guy is all about. Let's see what this thing's like on the smell. Oh yeah. Very, 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 very deep in flavor. Getting a lot of like roasted kind of multi cho like chocolatey coffee notes oh yeah definitely you could definitely tell this is a boozy one for sure yeah smells absolutely delicious so let's pour this guy i want to see how like thick and heavy this one is with it being a 13.7 i'm thinking it's going to be a thick one so drink it out of my untapped tulip glass a little baby tulip glass this afternoon because i don't want to go too crazy with drinking this thing but let's see how this thing pours oh yeah like a kind of like a dark light brown head to it not much of a head at all to even think about but look at that I don't know with I think with some experience with like a Russian Imperial Stout it's gonna kind of be more of like a drier mouthfeel who knows this might have a syrupy kind of thickness to it but still getting a lot of those like deep oaky like coffee like deep deep dark flavors in this one on the nose yeah it smells absolutely delicious so let's give this guy a try so cheers everybody oh yeah right off the bat get hit with like nice kind of coffee flavors really nice bitterness to it but it actually does have more of like that thicker syrupy mouthfeel i think it was going to be kind of more effervescent with it being like a Russian Imperial style, but definitely there's that really heavy syrupy mouthfeel that sticks with you for a little bit. Yeah, that's delicious. Wow. Definitely not, not like your average, like, kind of milk stout or a pastry stout. So, very, very good with that. So, it's definitely more of their unique kind of style of a stout, in my opinion, just because... The way I look at it is if you're looking for a milk stout or a pastry stout, you're definitely going to get more sweeter flavors. With this one, you're going to get more robust, maybe some like darker, darker depth of fruit flavors, maybe possibly with like mixing of like a dark chocolate and a coffee situation, maybe like a prune, plum kind of situation. But overall, 
absolutely delicious. And I guess this one is actually their their biggest and most robust beers they have at the brewery. So I guess this one was one of the ones they created years ago and they started doing it in nano batches and it kind of got them to win awards and all that stuff. So let's see what the description of this one actually is. So the Dia de los Muertos, a.k.a. the Day of the Dead, or their ghost... 931 is next level rich. This Rus Russian Imperial Stout spills nutty mocha aromas, drawing you in for deep sips of candied fig and molasses coated espresso. Embers of semi sweet dark chocolate malts flicker throughout pinch black pour. Each sip, the line between roasty and silky, providing a full body taste of Adroit's mastery. But watch out, the complexity. Clever disguises the massive 13.7% ABV. Yeah, absolutely. Cr this one's definitely a very, very unique, roasty, toasty, absolutely delicious Russian Imperial Stout for sure. Wow. Yeah, it's delicious. Not. I'm definitely getting those coffee mocha flavors. I'm not really getting like maybe like a prune kind of date situation with like a little bit of uh, like the bitterness in there. I'm thinking more of the bitterness is going to come from that kind of dark chocolate coffee kind of flavor. But overall, very very smooth. Really can't tell it's a 13.7 at all, which mind blowing. You still get the warmth this down your throat that you would get from like that higher end ABV of a beer, but overall it's not boozy one bit. So, absolutely delicious. Yeah, absolutely delicious. So, what are you pairing with a draft of our quiet giant confused with 10 drop coffee and Madagascar vanilla? That sounds delicious. I kind of need to, I feel like I want to get my hands on that Imperial Oak, to be honest. That sounds delicious as well. But overall, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I really enjoy the nice kind of, this is probably one of the smoother like bitter coffee stouts I've had just because it's like when I've had some to where the bitterness kind of lingers for too long to where the mocha coffee flavors in this linger for a good amount but then it kind of gets washed away and you kind of get like a different kind of bitterness that sticks around that's actually more enjoyable I guess it might be like more of like a date kind of figgy kind of a little bit bitterness from that definitely really rich and I feel like this is absolutely delicious wow yeah it's definitely i wouldn't say it's an easy drinker but it's gonna be pretty difficult for me to like not keep this around my face hole the entire time but definitely a sipper for sure this is definitely one that i'm gonna sit back with and just enjoy for the next like maybe i won't say it's gonna take me 40 minutes to kind of drink this thing but a good amount of time just to sit back sip it and just enjoy but, but let's see what untapped does to say. But, wow, did I not even have an open? Jesus. I didn't even have untapped open. Look at me. Look how prepared I am. Let's see. So. What? How did it come to Victoria? What the hell? Let's do this. Where is it? Where to go? Where there you are, right here. So, what does Untapped have to say about this guy? So, like I said before, it's a 13.7% ABV. It's their flagship Russian Imperial Stout that they pretty much is their their main Russian Imperial Stout over there at Adroit. And with over 1,611 ratings, this one has an average rating of 4.12 on Untapped. Which, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. So, let's see what people have to say about this one. So. Somebody gave this a 375. Um, I've noticed a lot with Adroit that you can uh, get a lot of their stuff in beer stores in Europe, which I'm really interested to see. That's really cool, like some German kind of beer markets and all that kind of stuff because I see a lot of like European check-ins when it comes to Adroit in, ge in general, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Being able to have this high of a quality of beer that Adroit always keeps that standard too and actually have it available in other countries, especially where like places like Europe, like 
Germany and all like Stockholm kind of situations. Yeah, absolutely fantastic that you can get their stuff over there. So let's see, we got another three seven five. Let's see, we got a four two five. See, a lot of these places where these per people are purchasing this stuff, I can't even pronounce it because it's either in Belgian or like German or all that kind of stuff. So a lot of lot of overseas check-ins with this one. So this one was a four two five four. We got another four two five. We got a four and a half. Let's see, we got a three point five. Where is this one? It's called Backen, which yep, overseas as well. Another name I can't pronounce. Let's see, we got another three seven five. We got another four three seven five. 425. Oh, here we go. Somebody bought it off Tavor finally. So we got this one. Gave it a 425. Purchase off Tavor. That's where I get a lot of my stuff. Pretty much everything I get from Adroit is being purchased off Tavor, which is a great kind of platform if you're looking to kind of get like a beer subscription service. I know it may not be available everywhere around the country. You just kind of got to download the app, put in your zip code, and they'll tell you right away if you can get beer delivered to you from them. And it's a really cool service they provide. They're out of Washington State. And they ship beer all around the country when it comes to having over a couple thousand beers to choose from. And they change their kind of selection of different breweries they have up, different lineups of beers they have all the time. So you just kind of, it's one of those apps to where you at least check it once a day because they're updating it that frequently. So if you can get your hands on stuff from Tabor, especially anything from Adroit, just do it. It's one of those are one of those breweries that will not let you down at all. But and this one definitely is living up to that name of not letting me down. It's absolutely delicious. I don't know why, but this kind of gives like I could definitely see why Adroit when they put on their cans, they do like they show different pairings and stuff where it comes to food, cheese and cigars. I could definitely seeing this one pairing really well with the cigar just because it's like those deep richer flavors that are coming through to where i don't know it's just like that tobacco cigar taste to me would pair absolutely perfectly with this i haven't had a cigar in years but when i was a cigarette smoker kind of something like this i feel like this would go really well with it i know i'm not talking about smoking cigarettes over here on this channel because you know that's another conversation for another day but yeah this one's Absolutely fantastic. Adroit knocked it out of the park again. I could definitely see why this is their namesake. Russian Imperial Stout for sure. But let's kind of go through the thick everything and let's figure out what our ratings are going to be on this one. So before I do that, let's pour a little bit more into the glass. Because why not? Fill her up. Oh yeah, this one's this is a thicker one. I definitely have definitely has that thicker mouth, like heavier mouthfeel to it. I was surprised it actually had as much of a heavy mouth feels I thought but let's see can art do I really have to say anything anything a droid comes out with when it comes to can art is absolutely fantastic just look at the detail having that I forgot where I've seen this lady before I know it's kind of a popular kind of face paint style or like a way you dressed for the day of the dead kind of like how the people in like Mexico would celebrate Halloween they dress up like this kind of doing stuff like that but the amount of detail in this can art is unbelievable absolutely unbelievable with the story on top to the that how detailed the face is coming stuff from the stuff in the background yeah Abs absolutely amazing absolutely amazing so yeah easy five out of five do I even have to kind of say anything when it comes to this can art it's awesome absolutely awesome but before we get into some other stuff with this one with other ratings on stuff let's look at see what this pairs with because right on the can it tells you what food it would pair with and right here it's saying uh, vanilla coffee rub sirloin with ro uh, roasted baby potatoes and molasses air what the hell is molasses air maybe it's like when it's grilling or something like that something to make the kind of the air around it a little bit more of a molasses kind of air situation I don't know but I could definitely see this beer pairing really well with like a really red meat. Maybe like, I can see this also pairing well with prime rib, to be honest. But like a nice sirloin. Yeah, sign me up. And let's see, there's the cheese they say it pairs with. I guess it's probably like a smoked gouda they say it pairs really well with this. 
which I don't remember if, I don't think I've had Gouda quite often to where it's like right off the bat I can tell you what Gouda tastes like, but I wouldn't be sure if this would pair well with it, but then it also it also tells you a cigar would pair with, which I can't even pronounce, Camacho Cugro Maduro. I could be botching that completely well. But overall, yeah, I really like the touch they do when it comes to telling you what food, cheese, and cigar pairings you can do with this stuff. Because I think that's a nice touch to kind of give people options. You never know. But let's see. If I got this one in a flight at Adroit Theory... Would I get another one? Absolutely. I, it's definitely a nice change of pace when it comes to a lot of the sw the sweeter kind of stouts that I've had. The coffee isn't too overpowering. It's definitely more of a very unique kind of coffee flavor in there with that more of that mocha taste to where there's that slight sweetness. But then instead of that just that roasted bitterness that sits on your tongue a little bit from other like coffee stouts, it turns into like a different bitterness to where it's like, Sticks with like, like a little bit of a coffee bitterness at first, then it kind of goes to a dark chocolate bitterness, and then it kind of goes to like a fig date kind of little. I don't know if for, I wouldn't say figs and dates have like a bitterness to it, but definitely has that unique flavor that balances out really well. And it's just, it's crazy too that this is a 13.7 and it doesn't really taste boozy to me at all. It's like the only thing that you could tell it's a high ABV is the warmthness of you drinking it when it goes down your throat, which is always a good sign of um, pretty much letting you know this is a higher ABV beer, but it doesn't taste like any alcohol is in there, but it's absolutely fantastic. So let's see, what is my final rating on this one going to be? Hmm. Let's see. I think I may like prefer more of like the sweeter stout kind of situation though when it comes to like having different flavors show up like I'd prefer more of like a I guess more of like a desserty kind of stout because then it gives more unique flavors that you can kind of play around with when it comes to maybe adding stuff like French toast adding cinnamon kind of situations different kind of notes that you pick up on after having so many different stouts having those more unique kind of different spices that you could add to a beer to kind of add that little bit extra depth in it I feel like I would enjoy more, but for being what this is, it's amazing, definitely. For a Russian Imperial Stout, they absolutely nailed it with this one, 100%. So I think I'm going to give this one a solid, I would say between an 8.25, 8.5. I think I'm going to stick with an 8.5 on this one. I would definitely recommend this one if you're, if you're a fan of coffee, and if you like a nice coffee stout, this would definitely be one to put on your list for kind of searching for. If you, anything from Adroit Theory, practically. If you can get your hands on anything from them, just do it. You're not going to regret any beer you probably pick up from them. They have so many different varieties. Their can art is always fantastic. Just, I feel like when it comes to making beer, they're perfectionists, and you can see it in the craft that they make. It's unbelievable a lot of the times. I've I've said it already that I've never been disappointed with the beer I've gotten from Adroit Theory. Never. And it's just... Everything is so like put down to a T. It's so complex, so many different flavors going on, and it's they do it with no matter what beer you drink from them. So, very, very great job to Adroit Theory for this one. Absolutely fantastic. Definitely one I recommend if because Russian Imperial, if you're used to a like kind of more of a pastry desserty stout, this might be a little bit of a different flavor for you, but if you're a coffee stout fan. This would definitely be one that you would want to pick up, I think. It's a higher ABV, so you kind of got to let yourself know that this isn't going to be a fast drinker. This isn't like your, your kind of Guinness kind of stuff. No, this is a big boy kind of stout. And it's fantastic. So I think I'm going to... Okay, after all this, after talk about it, I think I'm going to give it a solid 8.5. 8.5 out of 10. Really, really solid. Definitely recommend it. But overall... I think that's pretty much what I have for you guys today. So, again, thank you everybody in chat for hanging out. You guys are awesome. I know we saw some new faces come in. And then we saw all the regulars, which is awesome. I love seeing you guys in here every day. And it's going to be a fun time whenever we do this stuff. But, I'm trying to think. Anything else? No, I think that's pretty much it. So, if you want to see more of social media 
social media aspect of beer drinking, make sure to get yourself on Untapped. It's a great platform for beer drinkers. A bunch of us are on here that are in chat right now. Wintucky, Derek, Duchess, I believe Ian's on there. I think I remember seeing you on Untapped before. I may be wrong, I don't know, but of course, Imperial Oak, you can find their brews on there. So if you ever go to Imperial Oak, pick up stuff from them. You can check in their stuff. They have a Untapped is just a great platform, and they have a bunch of deals that they do when it comes to like finding different discount codes with either going on their store, purchasing glassware, shirts, merchandise, you name it. And they give you deals with like different kind of beer subscription services like beer crates and all that kind of stuff that you can sign up for and all that stuff. So really, really cool stuff that uh, Untapped does over, over there. Or you can go over to their YouTube channel as well, at which they kind of sit down and talk to brewers, like brewmasters from different breweries around the country, just have conversations, uh, kind of talk about different badges that they're kind of going around right now. I think uh, there was one a couple weeks ago where they were talking about a uh, Canadian brew. So they're like two of the guys that kind of host their untapped YouTube like podcast kind of situation. They were talking about like unlocking a Canadian beer badge kind of situation and they were both drinking a beer from Canada and so they do a bunch of stuff over there on their YouTube channel so definitely go there check them out I know I think it was yesterday they had uh the head brewer from Eagle Park Brewing Company which was the brewery that kind of pretty much uh worked with Hope for a Day to kind of come out with the the Things We Don't Say beer series which is the IPA series where over 190 breweries took place and kind of came out with a collaboration event to put out a bunch of IPAs, and they did an absolutely fantastic job with all of them. So, I think that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. So, again, thank you, everybody in chat, for hanging out. You guys are awesome. Make sure to hit that like button before you leave. It help me out a lot. And if you're watching the replay, put down what you're drinking as you're watching my stuff. I want to see what people are what people are drinking as they watch us. Or I'll keep an eye out on Untapped and see if you check something in, and maybe who knows, it might show up on this channel for review. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to say it like I always say it, and we're going to get the hell out of here. If you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Don't drink and drive. And I will see you all next time, people. Cheers.